In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the eDesign Shape Tools. The Shape Tools create frames that can be used as graphic elements or as frames for images. The Shape Tools are located here in the Tool Panel. By default, the Rectangle Tool is on top, but if you click and hold on the Rectangle Tool, the other Shape Tools will appear, allowing you to choose the Rectangle, Ellipse, Star, or Polygon Tools. Let's start with the Rectangle Tool. You click and drag to create the shape. When you release the mouse button, the shape is created. When drawing with the Rectangle Tool, you can hold down the Shift key to constrain the shape to be a perfect square. Once the shape is drawn, you can switch to the Selection Tool to move or resize the shape. If you're wanting a perfect square, hold down the Shift key when you resize the shape to keep it in proportion. Now let's switch to the Ellipse Tool. Click and hold on the Shape Tool area and then choose the Ellipse Tool. As with the Rectangle Tool, click and drag to draw the shape. If you hold down the Shift key while drawing, you'll get a perfect circle. Once the shape is drawn, switch to the Selection Tool to move or resize the shape. Hold down the Shift key when resizing if you want to keep the same proportions. Now let's switch to the Star Tool. By default, the Star Tool draws a standard 5-point star. However, you can use the Star Tool to create a variety of star shapes. To access the other options, double-click with the Star Tool. The Height and Width control the initial size of the shape, but the size can be changed once the shape is drawn. The main things you want to pay attention to are the number of points and the star inset. For this example, I'll enter 10 points and a star inset of 50% and click OK. And now you see the star that that created. I'll double click again, and this time I'll enter 12 points and a star inset of 75% and click OK. Once the shape is on the page, you can resize it as normal. However, you cannot change the parameters such as the number of points or the star inset. To change this, you'll need to draw a new shape. I'll now switch to the Polygon tool. The Polygon tool by default draws an octagon. But if you double-click with the tool, you'll open the Polygon Options dialog box. You can then enter the size, the number of sides, and the desired rotation to create a custom polygon. Once the shape is on the page, you can resize it with the selection tool as always. And that's the basics of using the shape tools in eDesign. To demonstrate the stroke and fill options and the corner types, I'll start out with these three shapes on the page. I'll also switch to the Line tool shown here and create a straight line on the page. I'll switch back to the Selection tool, select the rectangle, and zoom in at 300%. When a shape is selected, you'll see in the Control Panel the controls for Stroke, Fill, and Corner Type. Let's start with Stroke. The stroke is the border around a shape. The size of the stroke is set here. The measurements are in points, just like font sizes. You can select one of the preset options, or you can place your cursor in the field, select the current value, type in a new one, and hit enter or return on the keyboard. If you set the stroke weight to zero, the shape will have no visible border. The stroke color is set with a color swatch beside the pencil icon. The colors available to you are those that have been activated by your advisor or editor, and any other colors that are active on the current spread. If you hover over a color swatch, the name or color values will appear. If you click to select the swatch, the stroke color will be changed. Directly beneath the stroke color is the shape's fill color. The fill is the color on the inside of the object. As with the stroke color, you can click to reveal your color options, and then click to select the color swatch that you want. To the right of the fill color is the control for the corner type. You can only change the corner type on a shape that was created with the rectangle tool. Since I have this square selected, the option is available to me. Click on the icon to reveal the corner types. Rounded is selected by default, but the corner radius is set to zero. If you select a radius value greater than zero, you'll see the rounded corner applied to the shape. The higher the value, the more rounded the corners. You can experiment with the other types of corners as well. Inner rounded, bevel, 
and inset. The process is the same for changing the stroke and fill options for other types of shapes. The one exception would be a line. When you select a line, you only have the stroke options. Since the shape is not closed, it cannot have a fill color. You should be aware that the stroke and fill settings stay in place during an eDesign session until you change them. To illustrate this, I'll select this shape and change the stroke and fill settings. I'll make it something pretty wild so that it will be obvious. Now when I switch to one of the shape tools, notice that the last settings stay in place. So when I start to create new shapes, they'll have the same settings that I last used. You can change the stroke and fill before you draw the shape if you like, or you can adjust it after the shape is drawn. Let's look at a quick tip for changing the stroke or corner options for multiple shapes on a spread. Let's say I wanted all the image frames on this spread to have a one-point black stroke. With the selection tool active, I'll hold down the shift key and click on multiple shapes to select them all at the same time. Then when I change the stroke options, all of the shapes will be changed at the same time. And that's how you work with stroke, fill, and corner type. In this tutorial, we'll look at how you can change the stacking order of objects on the spread. I know, you're thinking, what in the world is the stacking order? Well, every object on the spread has a location in this stacking order. This means that eDesign considers one object above or below every other object on the spread. You only notice this when items overlap on the spread. Items that eDesign considers above other objects will appear on top and objects that eDesign considers to be below the other objects will appear beneath. If you want to change this order, you use the Arrange commands. For instance, if I wanted this red circle to appear above the green circle, I would select it and go to the Object menu, then choose Bring Forward. eDesign will then move the red circle up one level in the stacking order, which in this case moved it above the green circle. You must be aware, however, that eDesign is considering every object on the spread when moving an object up one level or down one level. So just choosing the bring forward or send backward commands may not always achieve the results you intend because it just moves the object up or down one level. More useful, perhaps, are the bring to front and send to back commands. These commands take an object and move it to the top or to the bottom of the stacking order on the spread. So with the green circle selected, I'll choose Bring to Front, and the object will be moved on top of all the others. Choose Send to Back, and it will be moved beneath all the other objects on the spread. You can also arrange more than one object at a time. If you hold down the Shift key, you'll select multiple objects at the same time. Then when you choose Bring to Front or Send to Back, all the selected objects are moved up or down in the stacking order at the same time. And that's the basics of arranging objects on a spread in eDesign. Rotating objects is a simple process in eDesign. For this example, I'll be using this image that's been placed on the page, but these same techniques could be applied to any object in eDesign. You can rotate an object using the selection tool. When I select the image and place the cursor just outside one of the corner handles, you'll see that the cursor changes to a rotate icon. When this rotate icon appears, you can click and drag to rotate the object in whichever direction you wish. I'll select Edit Undo to put the image back to its original position. You can also rotate an object to a specific angle using the control panel. The image is still selected, and in the control panel I see this field which shows the rotation angle. I can select one of the preset angle measurements, or I can select the value, Type in a custom value and hit enter or return on the keyboard. The rotation angle can also be set back to zero to remove any rotation that was previously applied. By default, objects are rotated around their center point, but you can change this if you wish using the reference point selector at the bottom left. By default, the center point is selected, but if I click to select the upper right corner point, then rotate the image, you'll see that the image rotates around the upper right corner. If I switch to the bottom center and then rotate the image, it will rotate around the bottom center point. The reference point that you select will remain selected until you change it or until you log out of eDesign. 
The next time you log in, the reference point will be set back automatically to the center point. And that's how you rotate objects in eDesign. eDesign comes with some automated functions that help you align and distribute objects. We'll take a look at them in this tutorial. We'll use this collection of shapes to illustrate the align and distribute functions, but these same functions can be used with any objects in eDesign, text frames, shapes, images, etc. To use the align and distribute functions, you have to select more than one object. So with my selection tool active, I'm going to hold down the shift key and come and click on multiple shapes. In this case, I'm going to click on all five of these shapes to select them all. I want to zoom in on those so we can see them a little easier on screen. So I'm going to go over here and choose to zoom in at 100% on these objects. With more than one object selected, you'll see in the control panel at the bottom, these set of options, which are your align options, and these set of options, which are your distribute options. Let's look at the align options first. If I click here, it will align the left edges of the selected objects. So if I click, they'll be perfectly aligned down along their left edges. I'm going to undo that. If I click here, it's going to align their right edges. I'm going to undo that. If I click here, it's going to align their horizontal centers. If I click there, now the centers of all the objects horizontally are perfectly aligned. I'm going to move down here and look at this other group of objects. This time, instead of holding down the shift key and selecting, I'm going to click and drag. And as I click and drag, anything that I touch with this selection box when I release the mouse button will be selected. So now all five of these shapes are selected. If I come down here and choose to align the bottom edges, they'll be perfectly aligned. Undo that. Align their top edges, they'll be perfectly aligned. And align their vertical centers. Of course, they're already aligned along their vertical centers, but uh, let's do the top edges and then the vertical centers. You get the idea. Now let's move over here to this side of the page and this other set of objects. These will be used to illustrate the distribute options. The distribute options are a little harder to understand in some ways, and the two that are most helpful are distribute vertical centers and distribute horizontal centers. The others have some specialized uses in certain cases, but in most cases they're not all that helpful and we won't really pay much attention to them. Let's just focus on distribute vertical centers and distribute horizontal centers. And these functions are going to be most useful when you have shapes or objects that have an equal height or width. In this case, I have five equally sized squares, and I would like these objects to be distributed across the top of my page evenly so that they have the same amount of space in between each one. I could try to do the math in my head and move them around and try to make them perfectly aligned, but using the distribute function is going to make this a lot easier for me. The first thing I'm going to do is place one shape in the furthest direction to the right I would like it to be, and then I'm going to place the other shape in the furthest direction to the left that I would like it to be. Then I'm going to select all the objects. It's going to make it a lot easier if we align their top edges, so I'm going to click on Align Top Edges, and then I'll come over and use this option right here, Distribute Horizontal Centers. And when I do that, all of the objects are perfectly distributed along their horizontal centers so that there's an equal amount of space in between each one of these shapes. I want to illustrate that more on a vertical axis now. So I'll place one object in the topmost place that I want them to be distributed, and I'm going to take one and put it in the bottommost place that I want them to be distributed, and then I'm just going to place the other ones somewhere in between. Now when I select them all, I'm going to align their left edges, and then I'm going to choose this option distribute vertical centers. And now they're perfectly distributed along their vertical centers so that I have an equal amount of space in between each object vertically. So that's the basics of using these align and distribute functions. But I want to show you one other example using some circles. So I'm going to go ahead and paste down some objects that I had previously created. So I have this large green circle, a little bit smaller pink circle, a little bit smaller blue circle, and then a little bit smaller yellow circle. I'm going to select all of those, then I'm going to come down and choose to align their horizontal centers, and then I'm going to choose to align their vertical centers. So if you ever wanted to create a set of concentric circles, that's how you do it. Select all the circles, align their horizontal centers, their vertical centers, and you have a set of concentric circles.